Okay, so we're going to talk about alcoholic peripheral neuropathy, and um, I'm Dr. Martin Rutherford. I'm board certified. Uh, no, I'm not board certified. I'm a certified functional medicine doctor. Dr. Gates is a board certified chiropractic neurologist who practices functional neurology, and we work together on chronic problems. One of the um, chronic problems that we see frequently, and is a large part of our practice, is peripheral neuropathy. And if my understanding is correct from the patients, from uh, probably hundreds of patients that we've seen who have peripheral neuropathy, most come in and are told um, your neuropathy is either diabetic, um, it could be your neck, could be your low back, could be your ankle. Now I'm hearing a little bit more about try B12, try alpha lipoic acid, and if it's not any of that, then, or if you're doing all that and, and you're fixing your diabetes and you still have it, then basically you have to live with it. Um, the contemporary neurology series put out by the American Medical is it Association. It's by the American Academy of Neurology. American Academy of Neurology is put out every four years, something like that. I mean, they come out with books every year. Every yeah, year. They're continually updated. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of the Bible of peripheral neuropathy. They list approximately 80 different causes of peripheral neuropathy in there. Um, we kind of think they're right <laughs> based on what we've seen in, in, in our practice. And one of the one of the types, one of the causative factors of a certain type of peripheral neuropathy is um, alcoholism and alcoholic uh, peripheral neuropathy. And so as Dr. Gates pointed out to me before we started doing this, we're probably usually communicating to people who have who have um, who deserve to be a pat on the back if you're watching this and you have um, are in the process of stopping drinking alcohol. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to accomplish. The uh, percentages of people who try to do that and are able to do it are pretty low. Uh, so, however, we do see them, <laughs> and they come in with peripheral neuropathy, and there are uniquenesses to the alcoholic peripheral neuropathy that differ from some of these other 79 different things that uh, that will create burning, numbness, tingling, sharp shooting pain, and a variety of different um, symptoms that you get in your feet. So Dr. Gates has, uh, has, has worked with the patients on these. Uh, we're currently working with one at, 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 as we speak. And he'd like to share with you his findings on how this comes about, the physiology of it, and what are the prospects of you uh, resolving that peripheral neuropathy? Okay. And so with alcoholic peripheral neuropathy, we know that alcoholism by itself can cause a vitamin B1 deficiency. Vitamin B1 is thiamine. And thiamine basically is important in a lot of biochemical pathways, including processing carbohydrates. And when we drink alcohol in excess, it can, in essence, cause us not to absorb thiamine, or it can also or thiamine, however you want to say it, and it can also decrease your liver's stores of thiamine. Now, with that being said, we're now seeing that alcoholic neuropathy is a separate entity from thiamine deficient neuropathy. And the reason being is that in the literature they have observed, patients with peripheral neuropathy who were alcoholics, who were drinking basically in excess of 100 grams of alcohol a day for 10 years, and they have normal thiamine levels. So lots of times these are well-nourished alcoholics where they're eating good while they were drinking in excess. And we see that the alcohol by itself can form into acetaldehyde, which can damage the nerve tissue uh, also. And this is important in its, in its designation because alcoholic neuropathy patients have a tendency to have what are termed small fiber neuropathy symptoms and signs. With peripheral neuropathy, we have the nerves that are in essence dying down there in the feet. And with that, there are many sizes of other nerves within a big nerve like your sciatic nerve. Some are really small in diameter, some are big in diameter. It's these small diameter ones that are preferentially affected in alcoholic neuropathy. Again, those who drink in excess and were well nourished. And when we get small fiber neuropathy occurring, basically small fiber nerve fibers encode pain and temperature. So it's not uncommon that the alcoholic neuropathy patient has burning pain in their feet, sharp shooting pains in their feet. And when we examine them, they preferentially lose things like pain temperature or their pain temperature and you know, pinprick senses are heightened down there in the feet. One of 
other way of diagnosing a small fiber neuropathy is by doing what is termed an intraepidermal nerve fiber density test, which is where we go in and we cut out a little piece of skin and they put it under a microscope slide and they look and see how many little nerves are there. But you can diagnose small fiber neuropathy on a clinical basis without having to use something called a QSAR test. And that is what a lot of you alcoholic neuropathy patients are facing now that you've basically detoxed and you are in your rehabilitation from that disease. And many of people come to us complaining of these burning pains in their feet, not knowing really what's going on. And it's neuropathy so commonly. So that is what I really wanted to go back to your diagnosis. You can get the uh, le uh, electrodiagnostic tests on small fiber peripheralty. And lots of times if you get electrodiagnostic testing, it will be normal. So you'll go to your well, neurologist. A lot of people come in and go, why? I can't have that. And neurologists are very busy and lots of times uh, may not be really thinking small fiber neuropathy. You know, it's just in my clinical mm -hmm. experience, we see it all the time, mm -hmm. where the person goes in for a nerve conduction velocity test, an EMG test, and it will come back normal and the person's told they're normal. They stick needles in you down there and they run an electrical current in there and they see how how the nerve's functioning or how it's transmitting the, the nerve impulse, how quickly or whatever. And I, the reason I mention that is because I have a lot of people come in, I do the I do the intake interviews and I and, and I get a lot of people, but my test was normal. They said I didn't have it. Right. And, and, and I want to just a, another quick point because you, you mentioned this. What type of in office test would show that they have it. Let's so sometimes simple. running a pinwheel down the person's yeah. leg and seeing what happens as we get into the foot. You'll be surprised. Or checking <laughs> your Achilles tendon. Checking uh, the reflexes, reflexes and, and checking your absent. how well there are uh, temperature thresholds that we do where we can see, okay, can you feel a certain temperature at a certain point? Very simple tests. Now, the re and I wasn't being denigrating at all to the medical right, Please right. know that. We love no, but I just wanted to draw because these are the things that folks Right, and people need know. to know both sides of the equation. Yeah. And there are other tests for small fiber neuropathy that are more laboratory tests, like I talked about, the intraepidermal nerve fiber density. Also something called a QSART test, which is a quantitative pseudomotor axonal reflux technique. Big word, that's done, done at specialty centers where basically they test how well you sweat. There are other simpler tests that are coming out which have some pretty good sensitivity uh, and specificity varies termed the neuroderm test, I believe, and basically it tests how well you sweat on your foot, which is a function mediated by small fibers, small fiber nerve fiber. Yeah. So. But you can do it and you can, you can have it tested in an, in, in an office environment with simply a pinwheel, Achilles tendon, using a piece of cotton, using uh, toothpicks or whatever you want. I don't want to denigrate it. I'm just saying that if you do a good history, if you understand what the symptoms of alcoholic peripheral neuropathy are, and then you do this test, and then you find out that that all of these, or three quarters of these tests are positive, the, the pin and this, you got it. I mean, I mean, I know we're enamored by the sophisticated, but a lot of times the sophisticated is not as sensitive as doing the history and the exam. And really not readily available, especially these QSAR tests. Yeah. Again, I said they're, they're available at specialty centers. We live here in Reno, Nevada. We have a population of approximately 300,000 in this basin. But to my knowledge, no one is doing QSAR tests in this area. So that's where I think some medical neurologists are a little wary of making the small fiber neuropathy diagnosis, diagnosis because yeah. they commonly can use the nerve conduction velocity and the EMG to solidify their diagnosis that it is peripheral neuropathy involving all fiber types. But for a small fiber neuropathy, it gets a little more nuanced, hard to diagnose. You also have to look for other things that could potentially go on, be going on, like with the spinal cord and things of that nature. Right. So we rule those things out in making our diagnosis. But just know if you have alcoholic neuropathy. Another thing that we haven't talked about is that we do use techniques to stimulate the nerves in our office, electrical stimulation. And we've talked in other videos regarding neuropathy that basically the literature shows that you can go in and you can stimulate these nerves back into life for at least a couple days. But the underlying metabolic cause has to be addressed. And so if you can address the metabolic cause, in your case it was alcoholism, you eliminated that. And if we can go back in and give you certain nutrients maybe to rebuild your nerves back while stimulating your nerves, there's a possibility, and I say that because we see it clinically, where people feel better. We're not saying we have yeah. the cure for everybody, yeah. but we have cases that we handpick 
who we think are going to do well that go through our program where we stimulate the nerves and we address the metabolic components. And yeah, most people are pretty can happy. do better. The question is how much. Right. You know, substantially or, or whatever. How For some people, 50% might be substantially, but uh, but we see some pretty consistently good results with those techniques. So. Okay, yeah, that's and, all I wanted to point out. And if you have any other questions on this matter, you can go to powerhealthtalk.com and leave us a question there, or you can go to our Power Health Facebook page and send us a message and like us. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good day.